The Celestial Companions by Teresa Garcia. The various Mer societies did not simply spring from nowhere, but evolved under Mara's care and instruction. Like all children, they tended toward mischief without her direct presence as the numbers grew and villages became cities. Shrines became temples, and those who had the mystic gifts drifted into the clergy and shamanic roles. Just as was happening with the land dwellers, wars and skirmishes unfolded as higher life forces expected from their projects and experiments. She sipped her tea, eyes glued to the page. Two priestesses from vastly different temples met by pure chance and developed a, then, very illicit relationship. Not only were those closer to the surface previously unknown to fraternize by choice, and not only did they form the idea, planted in their hearts and minds, of course, of creating a network among the shrines and temples to spread and increase knowledge, but Neshmak and Barnala forswore male lovers and childbearing. The refusal to mate and bear children for Mara is what pointed to, among the temple scholars now, as what prompted the rule of mating, having children, and intermarriage among the points of the network. It is said that these two priestesses acted closer than sisters, even though their calling also meant that prolonged time together was a rare thing. They are also credited with the creation of various artifacts, which facilitated long-distance undersea communication, although by the time of my own studies only extremely few even knew how, and thus it is among the lost arts of the Mer nations. The text on the page stopped flowing at the end of his hesitant recitation. Kirsty fingered the page and pondered how it seemed Father Ronan had picked over his words before setting ink to parchment to speak. After she had absorbed it, then the words flowed again. As to your next question, I know you well enough to guess what it is. It is difficult to teach you that. I do know the theory behind it, but never had the luck to obtain one of those artifacts to try. I did practice with attempting to send messages gazing into the candle flames, though. I assume that you also might be able to make some, but unless you can track down someone with both tracks of knowledge regarding that skill, I cannot help you with that. I have confidence that you will restore this skill to them with your willpower, though. She nodded. I want to try. It bothers me that so much has been lost but I still am no closer to determining why the decline even happened in the first place. Can you tell me what happened to them? What do you think? It is my opinion it is either related to man or to some power issue among the temple clergy hierarchy, as happened with the human church while it was in the process of stamping out religions, and what later became the ministry in their stealing the power of deities to lock away. There is a reason I was branded a heretic by many then, child. If someone from the Church of the Men had not come for me in my abbey, then someone from the sea would have, eventually. Numerous squiggles unfolded, loopy, dippy, diving swirls that could only have been laughter since they were not characters in the languages he spoke, vaguely reminiscent of musical notation. Just in case it was also a bar of song, she hastily noted those, complete with placement to attempt deciphering. Another pause fell as the spirit of the skin he once more collected himself. They became stars, Kirstein. So, ascended souls leaving Mara's box? Yes. They died in one of the wars resulting from a horrible misunderstanding. Triton Aerno, a king of one of the short-lived nations, had them captured and executed in a bid to stop the unification process. This was long before Greece and Rome rose, so the word meant something different then, for the sake of language clarity. It was a threat to his grip on his nation, so he thought. Ven Thrith is always around during the wars, even though his realm is normally the sky and where moonlight touches. She is a deity of madness. She certainly has a hand in stirring things to have a little excitement. 
I don't think their death had been her plan. So, I can assume that in order to make things up to Mara, he took their souls and created a constellation? Precisely. They no longer reincarnate, and Marnala's skin is no longer either passing around or being held in storage. They shine as a reminder that there are more similarities than differences. Dreamers of what could be and what should be. The constellation spread across the next page, then a larger illustration of where in the sky it was located. Do you think I could find a way to speak with them? They know the old magics. Allie has told me of how the hydrosphere blends into the atmosphere and how that blends into space, and I've heard that space is like an ocean. You will have to tell me more of the modern Cowan science. I see no reason why you would not be able to. It is just a matter of finding how. Ghosts roam here, and people speak in dreams, and there is a whole magical science regarding... Psychicism? Is that the modern word? Her fingers brushed the fur on the cover as she nodded. So, I should visit Professor Cassandra for some tea. That would be a start. Kirsty heaved a deep sigh. David will be uncomfortable and wary. I should let him know, though. It has been quite some time since I've had those nosebleeds, but I'm not sure if straining would cause one. I never should have listened to the snake all those years ago. You were only eager. I doubt you're the only Selkie who wanted to earn her skin that bad. I highly doubt anyone else wound up living in two different times at once. Point, but you had special circumstances. Surely there are others who also might have walked into that serpent's board trap. That doesn't make me feel better. Thank you for today's lesson, though. She closed the Book of Seals and leaned back at her desk, looking up at the potted plants that reminded her of some that she had seen in the forests of her mate's homeland. So many things to do, and now that I'm older and more prepared, I need to go back there to retrieve that shard of the lady and free that glacial spring. Her sigh deepened when the cup she lifted to her lips was empty. The previous short story is set within the Selkie Skins universe during Kirsty's tenure as a Merse Studies professor and is intended for another volume of Pearls of Sea and Stone, Book of Seals, once enough stories have been written spanning the appropriate timeline. This is a separate companion series to the Selkie Skins stories. When I started writing for the Selkie Skins books, Dragon Shaman books, and the Shadow Chronicles books, which are currently being rewritten before their publication, because I conceived those in the 80s and 90s as a young girl. And there is a lot to fix. But back then, Xur, X-I-R, and Z, X-H-I, were used more commonly for intersex or gendered fluid individuals. I preferred the she, S-H-I, and her, H-I-R, also pronounced she and her, which was another alternate coming into use at the time. It was less common, so that's why I preferred that and it looked a little bit less odd. I believed there to be too confusing in use for this particular deity because it was both singular and plural. It made me very wary of the misinterpretation that could arise, such as what happened with Elohim. Ven Thrith, within this group of stories is male, female, and neither, or both, as she pleases. So I stuck with that, even though it was not until I got into the Selkie stories where I got to use that kind of thing much. 
Thank you very much for listening. I do intend to be recording more stories, both of my own writing and other writings, for the podcast and for the YouTube channel. Um, I have just been thrown for an extremely huge loop over the past few years due to various health conditions and other happenings. Until next time, and don't worry because there are book reviews coming, I am Teresa Garcia or Amehana Arashi, and this has been an episode of Mythical Minstrelsy.